Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a match from WCS Spring between Zanster and Clem here on New Repugnancy. Bottom left hand corner, the Red Terran player. He is young, he is French, and he is Clem. In the top right hand corner, hailing from Sweden, it is the Blue Zerg player, Zanster. Not as young as Clem is, but still fairly young. And let's go ahead and get right on into it here. All right, man. You are not proxying barracks. And Zanster kind of feels good about that, but he doesn't know it yet because he is Slover Lord scouting. Drone scouting would uh, reveal proxy barracks, but professional Zerg players do not feel like it is worth it for the economic hit. Oh, hang on a second. Pool first. Extractor pool. Extractor pool will, uh, at this level, block any... Attempt at proxy barracks. So, okay, Zanser, you get a pass here. I always forget that. I always forget. Either drone scout or go pool first before hatchery. And you will be safe from all of those proxy two barracks or three barracks pushes that Terran can affect. Well, Terran can put into effect and win the game versus you. D -d -d Hang on a second. Where are the... Where are my thing go? Come back. Come back, damaged. There you are. Sometimes it does this. I don't know why. Client, you're messed up a little bit once in a while. So there's the Reaper. Reaper's name is Mr. No Name. No description. Back to the cast. I feel like that probably came from somebody who complains about the Reaper description names that I have here. Uh, I like them. I have fun saying them. People like writing them, so I'm not going to stop doing it. But some people definitely complain about it. And somebody found a way to kind of circumvent it by making their own Reaper name that is literally Mr. No Name with no description. Which I think is very funny. So one racks expand, no big deal. There's your one gas. Second gas should come up here just in a second here. Out of Clem. Clem, I like this kid. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. He's young. I think he might be 16 at this point. Possibly coming up on 17. They grow up so fast these times. Now here's the play. Is if the Reaper can find the Lings. No, look, look. Lings up here. Reaper down here. This is exactly why you want to SCV scout if you're Clem. Is you get up here with the Reaper... And you're like, hey, check this out. This is not done yet. Go home. There's Lings. There are Lings heading for your natural base. Can they get there in time? The Reaper cruising on down. Zoom, zoom. Wait, wait. What? Hut? Hoop. Wow. Where are you going even? They're really trying to take the other way. Oh. Did the Reaper think the Lings weren't there because they came up to this north path? Either way, they're not going to stop construction on this natural. Are they going to be Banelings? What is this? You're going to be too late to really stop this thing. Reaper comes in and actually might... There we go. Did force into drone into an extractor. Which is a minor victory there. But the Ling's coming on up here. And nice control by Clem. Uh-uh. Stutter stepping is for real. The natural base does complete. Is upgrading to an orbital command. And yeah. I mean, so, so speed is done. Speed is useful here against these Marines. They can't kite nearly as effectively. If there are Ling hacking on him, and oh, the Ling, the Ling survived. He's got a kill. Now Hellion is here though, and he's toast. So whoosh, saving that SCV's life. Third base does go down for Zanster without much issue. Well done indeed. That's hard to do when there's a Reaper out, and you don't have any Lings to escort any Speedlings or Queens there. So I don't know. I, I'm really curious why Zanster didn't just go in. He uh, he could have delayed construction on the natural a little bit. And sure, if he waited for he did wait for speed, and he did end up getting a couple Marines there. But otherwise, I'm not sure if that was entirely worth it for him. I mean, either way, he went pool first. He was entirely safe from the proxy stuff. Reaper comes in and sees no lair. Oh, the lair starts as soon as he dies. Nicely done, Zanster. It's going to be Cloak Banshee follow-up. Out of Clem, fairly standard stuff here, really, in the TVZ matchup is going for those Cloak Banshees as the follow-up to the Hellions, which are already out here, as I mentioned previously. Roach Warren on the way at about 49 supply uh, for Clem, 47 supply for Clem. And third base is going to pop here any second. He's got the queens to go ahead and inject on that as necessary. Spreading creep like a boss too. Creep spread incredibly important. I've really tried to focus that on that on my uh, own games on ladder recently. And it's been nice. I mean, really, Terran players especially are very worried about wandering onto creep. They know those surrounds are possible. They know banelings are much faster on creep versus off of creep. And it delays pushes and lets you know they're coming. And it lets you reinforce your units a little bit better than if they just kind of just show up at your third base with not much warning. So, Hellions come in and say, there's no drones here to roast, but uh, two queens and a handful of speedlings is kind of enough to force them away. 
You don't have to have a whole ton to deal with five Hellions. Why are there five instead of like increments of two? Quick pause. We didn't have to endure, thankfully, as this is a replay. But yeah, creeps were connecting all of the bases. This is really good stuff. Spore crawlers coming up to deal with, I guess, the assumed. No, he saw it. He saw the tech lab on the starport here. The Banshee does show up. There's already an Overseer, and there are already multiple Queens. So I think Clem is handling this exceptionally well. Zancer is just not getting anything done here at all as far as harassment goes. Has he killed any drones at all? Zero. Zero drones killed. He's lost a Reaper and a couple Marines, and he's going to be behind at this stage because of it. The Cloak Banshee Gambit didn't do anything. The Hellions didn't do anything either, hardly. That's going to be a Spire out of Zanster. Is he going Ling Bling? Uh, with a roach, though, like a roach banding corruptor kind of a thing. Well, let's go keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on exactly what he's going into here. I don't know that I've seen a spire and a roach warren at the same time in a while on the channel. So, roaches fighting queens and roaches. Look at this positioning by Zanster. It's really good stuff here. He's just everywhere that these hellions want to be. It's not working out at all. Free! There we go. Taking down a hellion is a nice job. Obviously not going to be mech as we see Marines in production and a tank, not a million tanks. Armory coming up now. Not, you know, not earlier for those Hellbats that these guys would turn into. Banshee still cruising up, but I mean, Queen Sporecrawler is enough to handle one cloaked Banshee. Just kidding, there's three. There are three cloaked Banshees and a Thor coming in too to deal with the Spire that he ended up scouting here too. So here come the Banshees. Queen's getting some nice shots off though. Three Queens versus three Banshees def is definitely not fair. For the Banshees, one queen per Banshee is definitely enough. Fourth base coming in six and a half minutes. Clem's third base has landed. As I mentioned, going for a couple Thors here. He is worried about Mutalisks. The Spire's done, but I don't see any air units whatsoever here. Nope, no, nope, there we go. Three Mutas in production. That's a canceled hatch. Transfuses. You can't, can you transfuse a building that's coming in? I don't think you can. As a result, fourth base does get canceled. That is a nice pickup for Clem. Hellions trying to see, is there a base over here we can deal with? No. There is not, but we're going to wait for a drone to come in here anyway. The Banshees are starting to pick off some of these drones. And as there are not... There we go. The Mutas are popping now. And now we are in a lot of trouble. We don't have Hyperflight Rotor, so we can't outrun the Overseers. And the Mutas will be able to catch us here. So where's the detection? Where's the detection available here? There we go. There's the detection. And now the Banshees are dead and they know. They're trying to split up. And nope. One gets picked off. Another one gets picked off. And the other one might manage to escape here. He's got four kills. Which is not the greatest. Oh, the Overseer doesn't have the speed upgrades. The Banshee does escape. Nicely done. Just getting a little bit lucky there that Zancer didn't bother upgrading that Overlord speed upgrade that does allow the Overseers to move quickly, too. Banshee firing. Ba -ba, ba -ba, on these Roaches. So it's a Roach Mutalisk play with no Banelings at all. Roach Muta is very interesting. Is Clem... He keeps making these Thors, man. It makes me feel like maybe he is going to transition into a mech here at about the 8-minute mark, which seems like late, but what are these? This will tell us. Factories! <gasps> he is transitioning into mech. Dang! Much later than I thought, or much later than uh, I thought was possible, but you know what? You can transition whenever the heck you want, turns out. So, Clem, three base in it. Definitely going for the mech strategies. Roaches might be able to get something done here. There's not a whole lot of army present. For Clem, I mean, there are a couple tanks and a couple Hellions and like two Thors, but jeez. Kind of feel like Zancer shows up just with a ton of Roach Ravager and he wipes this thing out. But he's got the Mutalisks, which aren't going to do a whole lot with the presence of Missile Turrets and the Thors. So maybe he uh, unfortunately sunk too much of his resources into something that won't allow him to kill the Terran player. He's hanging back as this is this the same Banshee. It is. Six kills on the Banshee that speed upgrade done? No, it's not done, but it doesn't matter. Overseer does spot for the queen, and it goes down anyway. So Zanster has a lot of resources, floating about 1,200 minerals and 1,100 gas. Is he saving for something? I don't know what, if he is. But yeah, this could be just a ton more Roach Ravager, and I think he kind of wanders into the third base here and just sort of wins, but he doesn't have vision on this at all. He doesn't know what army compositions are defending the third. Thors are trying to pick down some creep here, so he recognizes that's a problem. He's only making 11 more Mutalisks. 11 more Mutas? Eh, I don't know about this. Blue Flame is done for the Hellions. That is a huge key that we are dealing with mech here. It's a bit of a battle mech right now, a bit of a race car mech thing. 
Oh, look at him boxing these roaches in. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. The Muto is flying to the main base while everybody is otherwise occupied, but the turret does manage to chase them away. The Thors respond. The Mutas get the heck on out of there, losing one Mutalisk in the process. Yeah, so kind of race car mecking, but at the same time with Thors and Liberators and Marines and Tanks, Clem is doing a little bit of the Maru style where we'll just make a little bit of everything here and call it good. Mutalisks are trying to pick off these Cyclones. The Thor count is a little bit high here. That said, the Magic Box is doing some work. The Roaches are fighting against the Hellions, which is just fine for them. There's a tank in the back. Causing problems there, too. That Thor does end up taking down a couple of the Mutalisks before it gets wiped out. The Mutas are still alive to take out the Liberators that are in Siege Mode, and that is a decent hold from Zanster. But meanwhile, Blue Flame Hellions cruising on into the fourth base, taking off some of those drones. Couple more getting roasted up. Nine have been killed in the recent moments here. It is 83 to 78 workers. Zanster does have the lead. It's got a fifth base, a sixth base, rather, coming up here at the 12 o'clock position. Clan managed to take a fourth. In the midst of all of that chaos, army supply is 99 at 273. The Roach Muta play. I kind of like it. I really do. Magic boxing the Thors works a little bit uh, not as well when there are SEDs to repair them. And the Mutas do have to get on out of there. So we're going to try to knock through this wall. Maybe supply block climb a little bit, if at all possible. Nah. Got 200 supply available, only using 145 about right now. Third base, under attack, rom, rom, rom. tank fire on the high ground, doing really well against these roaches. Ling's cruising on in here too, Mutalisks trying to pick off that tank on the high ground. Nope, the Thors show up, and are they going to save that tank? That tank is still alive, are you kidding right now? No, it does get focused down. Another Thor goes down here too, Magic Boxing, the Thors, the repairs are keeping him alive. He's got seven kills and he does chase away the Muta flock. Some of them are still alive, but most of them did get wiped out there. How many Mutas have gone down in this game? 21 have been killed. 11,000 resources lost for Zancer. 10,000 lost for Clem. Scouting Barracks going to get taken out by these Mutalisks. Do they have attack upgrades? They've got them. No, they do not have attack upgrades. They've got plus one flyer Carapace, but otherwise... Meh, meh, meh. So Zanster, let's see. He's a 90 to 88 army supply. 100 army supply going into Hydralisk. Which I kind of like. Hiders do very well against Thors. There aren't many Blue Flame Hellions here to wipe them out. Zanster is going to land a fifth base over here on the left side of the map at about the 9 o'clock position. Zerglings lying in wait. And they just find some Blue Flame Hellions and get absolutely barbecued. They killed one Hellion in that engagement. Zergling up here trying to smash down a command center by his lonesome does not actually end up happening at all and yeah it's gonna be a race car mech with some thor support which really makes it not race car mech anymore i mean i would call this battle mech because you're slower right you're slower you're beefier with the thor support your anti-air is better greater spire getting started by zancer i kind of feel like you should have started that a while ago we are at the 13 minute mark right now it's not the vipers though what are the vipers even doing i don't see them blinding clouding i don't see them abducting there's an abduct on a thor <laughs> Gets wiped out in midair. That's very nice. Taking the Thors out of the composition is fantastic. And now the Rotidra really forcing the remaining Cyclones to retreat here. Actually, Hydra's in the front. As they don't take bonus damage from those uh, from those Cyclones. Bit of an Hellion run by down here in the bottom right. Hellion's up here at the 6th base too. Roasting up 16 drones get killed in the process. Sansa not really paying attention to his stuff back home. And more Hellions wandering on in. He does have static defense, though, which I'm a huge fan of. Especially into the later game against somebody who is going this many Hellions. But yeah, the lock-on and the kiting is fantastic right now from Clem. Looking good. Looking good overall. Uh, it's 180 to 157 supplies. Zanster is up. Some Widow Mines are in the mix here, too. Clem is just an incredibly active Terran player. It's very, very rarely that he's just kind of hanging out doing nothing. Lock on on one of the Mutalisks to chase it away. Lock on on this hatchery. The sixth base might end up going down. Meanwhile, a small group of race car mech does get shoved away by Roaches and Hydralisks. And yeah, the hatch is toast. Bam. Does manage to take it down. There's a massive victory for the Terran player. Abducting. Yeah, abducting the Cyclones is really what you want to be using these Vipers for in this situation. I know they're spellcasters. I know they're weird for you at the lower levels, but... You gotta do it against this particular composition. Keeping that Cyclone countdown is hugely important. Got a Fusion Core on the way. Could be Battle Cruiser, but I don't know. Could also just be that Advanced Ballistics upgrade for 
The Liberators. Rawr. All those Hellions die, but they take nine more drones down with them. It's 80 to 80 workers. 51 drones have been killed. I don't know. It's not many games I've seen where the Zerg player loses 50 workers in their first 15 minutes and ends up winning the match against a Terran player. So we'll keep an eye on that. I mean, it's not a curse necessarily. It's not something you can't overcome, but Clem expanding down to the 6 o'clock position now. He hasn't lost the base this entire game, and he's managed to kill a couple hatcheries on his own. Maybe just the one, but... It feels like a major victory here. So Broodlord's going to be the play. There are a bunch of Cyclones present, though. whole lot of Cyclones. Roach, Hydra with the Viper support here. It's not, I mean, there are too many Cyclones to actually abduct with these Vipers, as it turns out. Xanser taking a replacement 6th base here in the middle of the map. Just about. Blue Femme Hellions running on in. Again, Spines helping kill those. Only two drones going down that time. Number of Hellions killed. It's got to be a big number. 62 have gone down in this game. Zero Hellbats, surprisingly. This creep knows there's a base here. Those are sacrificial roaches. I don't know what else they're going for here. But Transformation Servos coming on in. Nine Broodlords in production advance. Ballistics coming in too for the Terran player. I don't know. I don't know that I've seen Broodlords against this particular... I have actually against this composition. And a good Terran player just kind of zones them out. Just basically says the Broodlords are slow. I'm just going to run back and forth to the outlying bases. And wipe those out while the Broodlords are trying to respond to them. And it's worked. It's worked from what I've seen here. Ah, oh, the replacement 6th base does force a cancel there. Does go down. The Broodlords show up. Surprise, surprise, Broodlords. And Clem is pulling back here. Like I said, you don't want to engage directly with the Broodlords. That's a bad thing. But he is starting to quadruple, quad pump, quadruple pump Vikings. However you want to explain that. Pathogen glands coming in for Infestors. This has been a pretty fantastic game. We are definitely getting into the late game right now. Another hatch out. Ugh, just burns down hatches so fast. Liberator setting up saying, no, you can't wander in here. Everybody who comes in these circles will die. I'm trying to make stuff happen. Broodlord's firing on in, and the Liberators can't do much about it. Look at him coming on in, and actually, oh, Blinding Cloud. Blinding Cloud trying to get that lock on on those Broodlords. A couple of them do get picked off. One is severely injured, and then Clem retreats from the position. He's expanded again to the top left-hand corner. This is just, uh, Clem is keeping up on bases. I think he might be ahead right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases for the Terran player. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is only six now, and only barely six, and this hatch is not going to finish either. I think Clem has this game, you guys. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at what I'm seeing here, and all I see is a Terran win. 19, 20 more drones go down. Blue Flame Hellion Control is absolutely impeccable, killing as many drones as Terranly possible. Another hatch going to go down. Like I said, you just kind of zone the Broodlords out. Look how slow they are. They can't respond to this in time to save it. Hatch down. Yeah, I think this is just further evidence that Broodlords are not the correct thing to do to deal with race car mech. Especially if there are no Thors to worry about and you're just race car in it. Sure, if you're offensively using the Broodlords, they're going to be fine. Right? Because you can engage perfectly. Ooh, Thors now coming in and they are in their single target mode. That outranges Broodlords, as it turns out. So in a direct confrontation, Thors will wreck Broodlords. But... If you have something buffering for the Broodlords, not allowing the Thors to get into that range, you're going to be okay as a Zerg player. Fungals getting tossed down. All right, kind of like the Fungals. Means kiting is a little bit harder there and does soften up the enemy units there too. Another hatch going down. This is just turning into Hatchapalooza. Well, anti-Hatchapalooza, I don't know. Liberators using their extended range to the best of their ability. Vikings are trying to pick out the Broodlords. They get a couple... Yeah, a couple of them are going down here. Some of them are very, very low on HP. Abducting. Lings are cruising on in. The Thors are using direct shots against these dudes. And I just don't see the Zerg army hanging on. But Infested Terran's clearing out a lot of these Vikings and the Liberators. And maybe. Maybe Zanster is holding on. But look at this. He's down 183 to 110 supply. And that's your good game. He held pretty well in that engagement. But he knew he was done overall. 
only had 55 workers to 80 of Clems. The number of bases definitely favored the Terran player there, too. Resources lost 42,000 compared to 30,000 for the Terran player. And Zanster gets that win. Whoosh! That was an impressive victory for Clem. This kid is good. I'm telling you, he killed six hatcheries in this game. Six hatches went down. Meanwhile, did not end up losing a single command center, orbital command, or planetary fortress, which is just... Even if that's the only stat you see in a ZVT, if a Zerg player doesn't manage to kill a single mining base of a Terran and they lose six hatcheries, it's uh, it's hard to win that way. Yeah, Broodlords were a mistake. I think until that point, he was holding his own. Uh, he definitely was using the Vipers to the best of his ability. The, I liked the Infestors coming out, but the Broodlords were basically dead weight. I'm not sure they did a whole lot there for him in the long run. 84 drones went down. That is so much Blue Flame Hellion run buying all over these bases. He was everywhere at once. Pure, pure race car mech at its finest here out of Clem. He really likes the strategy and he's very, very good at it too. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. All right, cool. Well, uh, hmm, that is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.